Hey guys, uh, welcome to Medical Master. Uh, today we are discussing uh, quickly the topic of staphyloma. There are some 10 12 MCQs uh, in this topic, and we'll quickly revise this topic uh, for the coming exams. So let's get started. Now, staphyloma is basically uh, an ectasia of the outer coat of the eye uh, with an incarceration of the uveal tissue, right? So basically what it means is that there is a protrusion of the uvea uh, through a weakened area in the outer coat, which could be in the cornea or the sclera. And depending on the site of the, of the weakness of the ocular coat, uh, there are five types of uh, staphyloma. So let's describe uh, each of these. Now, uh, staphyloma can be very well kept as an uh, as a spot diagnosis, as an image based question in the exams, uh, basically the clue to diagnosis is that your cornea is transparent and your sclera is white, right? But anytime you see some blackish or pigmented structure within the sclera, right? So uh, basically uh, the uvea uh, is uh, the tissue in the eye which has melanocytes. It is the pigmented part of the eye, right? So you've got the iris, you've got ciliary body, you've got choroid. All of these are pigmented. So anytime you see this pigmented structure within the sclera, the first thing that should pop in your head is a staphyloma. The sclera has to be white. Uh, anytime you see that the sclera uh, loses that whiteness, a, a staphyloma is one differential that you should always keep. Now. Uh, depending on the site of the uh, weakness of the outer coat, depending on whether uh, the cornea is involved or the sclera is involved and uh, the distance of the site of involvement from the limbus, uh, there can be five types of staphyloma. And each of these five types, different part of the uveal tissue uh, will be incarcerated or so sometimes you can have the body of the iris, sometimes you can have the root of the iris or the ciliary body or the choroid. Any of these structures can be involved depending on the type of the staphyloma. So we've got five types, uh, the anterior, uh, then you've got intercalary, you've got ciliary, you've got equatorial and posterior. Out of these five types, the most common is posterior staphyloma. The second most common, the second most common is the second most common is anterior staphyloma. The most common cause of staphyloma is uh, posterior high axial myopia, right? Or pathological. Now, the most common cause of posterior staphyloma is myopia, pathological myopia, and most common cause of anterior staphyloma is a perforating corneal ulcer, right? So overall, the most common cause of staphyloma is myopia because the most common type also happens to be the posterior staphyloma. Now, let's look at each of these types in detail. So anterior staphyloma basically refers to an incarceration or protrusion of iris, the body of the iris through cornea. So this is the second most common type of staphyloma and most common cause is a corneal ulcer which is a perforated or impending perforation. So in anterior staphyloma, what happens is that the anterior chamber becomes flat and there is accompanied uh, inflammation inside the anterior chamber and that can all lead to a secondary glaucoma. Now, the second type of staphyloma is the intercalary staphyloma. This occurs at limbus uh, and can extend to up to 2 mm behind the limbus. In intercalary staphyloma, the root of the iris and anterior most part of the ciliary body can be involved, right? So basically, if the MCQ is asked that what is the part, uh, what is the staphyloma in which root of iris is 
protruding or incarcerated the answer is intercalary staphyloma do note that in the anterior staphyloma we had the body of the iris which was protruding or incarcerated whereas here it's the root of the iris and also anterior most part of ciliary body can be involved now the causes of an intercalary staphyloma can be a peripheral perforating in injury of the cornea right that involves the limbus second cause could be a marginal corneal ulcer right which could be peripheral keratitis anterior scleritis uh, can also which is uh, in close proximation to the limbus can also cause intercalary staphyloma then sclerosmalacia perforans uh, which is the most serious type of scleritis it is basically necrotizing scleritis without inflammation necrotizing scleritis without inflammation and scleromalacia perforans is also regarded as the most serious type of scleritis and finally uh, you can have this after post trauma uh, or a uh, post cataract surgery in which we make a limbal incision so uh, that limbal incision Uh, is an area of weakness uh, through which the interior internal parts of the eye basically the root of the iris or ciliary body can protrude uh, giving rise to this intercalary staphyloma so a cataract surgery uh, which has been complicated uh, with wound dehiscence uh, which is post operative wound leakage uh, can also cause intercalary staphyloma in intercalary staphyloma you need to remember two points one is that root of iris is involved here and second it occurs at the limbus up to 2 mm behind limbus 2 mm right remember this now the third variety is ciliary staphyloma in ciliary staphyloma uh, the ciliary zone is involved this region and basically uh, there is incarceration of the ciliary body through a weakness in the sclera it occurs around 8 mm behind the limbus the causes of ciliary staphyloma can be a developmental glaucoma it could be a uh, advanced glaucoma scleritis uh, which will cause a weakness uh, in that uh, area of the sclera and finally it could be a traumatic injury uh, to the eye in the ciliary zone it could be blunt or more commonly a perforating uh, trauma for ciliary staphyloma basically remember two points it can occur uh, it occurs around 8 mm behind the limbus and secondly it involves the ciliary body in equatorial staphyloma uh, there is basically protrusion of the equatorial choroid uh, and this occurs uh, around 14 mm behind the limbus right uh, this is a weak area uh, in the sclera due to passage of the veins the vascular channels uh, and through which uh, there could be a protrusion of the equatorial choroid so that's known as an equatorial staphyloma the common causes of uh, equatorial staphyloma again we saw uh, scleritis advanced glaucoma uh, and degenerative myopia do note that degenerative myopia is the most common cause of staphyloma but mostly it causes a posterior staphyloma right but it can also cause an equatorial staphyloma because overall in myopia there is thinning uh, and uh, weakness of the sclera because of the elongation of the eyeball in posterior staphyloma uh, there is uh, protrusion of the choroid behind the equator 
Th so this involves mostly the posterior pole of the eye and the most common cause of a posterior staphyloma is degenerative high myopia, right? Posterior staphyloma is the most common type of staphyloma and myopia is the most common cause of staphyloma overall and it is also the most common cause of posterior staphyloma. Now the diagnosis of a posterior staphyloma is going to be through fundus examination and it can also be confirmed uh, through B-scan ultrasonography, right? So USG B-scan. Now treatment of staphyloma is uh, actually, uh, now treatment of staphyloma actually depends on the cause of the staphyloma and what is the visual potential of the eye. And thirdly, if vision can be restored or only cosmesis is the uh, indication for treatment, right? So the first thing we need to consider is uh, what is the cause of the staphyloma. So the common causes that we discussed were scleritis, uh, glaucoma, pathological myopia, right? So if there is scleritis, we'll treat it first. If there is uncontrolled glaucoma, uh, we'll treat it with uh, anti-glaucoma medications or a glaucoma surgery, right? Finally, if the other causes are treated, the underlying causes have been treated, uh, what we can do is if it's a small staphyloma, we can go for a local excision with a corneoscleral graft. A tectonic graft can be placed. So this area uh, was an area of posterior staphyloma. So we basically excised uh, the protruding tissue and then we have patched it with a corneoscleral graft or a tectonic graft. On the other hand, if it's a large staphyloma and if the visual potential of the eye uh, is uh, negligible and uh, we only want to achieve cosmesis for the patient. So what we can do is uh, we can uh, enucleate the eye and uh, put in a ball socket implant uh, to achieve cosmos, cosmesis. So I hope all those five types of staphylomas were clear. We'll quickly revise them. Uh, most common type is a posterior staphyloma. Most common cause of posterior staphyloma is pathological myopia. Myopia also happens to be the most common cause of staphyloma overall, right? Now, second most common type of staphyloma is anterior staphyloma. Most common cause of anterior staphyloma is a perforating corneal ulcer, right? Now, in anterior staphyloma, uh, there is protrusion of iris through cornea. In intercalary staphyloma, uh, there is a protrusion of root of iris through the limbus or 2 mm up behind the limbus. Okay. In ciliary staphyloma, there is bulging of ciliary body through the sclera and it occurs around 8 mm away from the limbus. In equatorial staphyloma, it involves the equatorial choroid, it occurs around 14 mm. Uh, behind the limbus and there is bulging of equatorial choroid through the sclera. Posterior staphyloma, there is bulging of choroid behind the equator through the sclera. Mostly it occurs at the posterior pole. The diagnosis of posterior staphyloma is uh, done through fundus examination uh, and also confirmed by ultrasound B scan. Right? Treatment options depend on the underlying cause. We'll treat sclera, we'll treat glaucoma uh, or other causes that might be the main factors. And then depending on the visual potential, we can go for excision plus tectonic graft or we can enucleate the eye uh, with ball implant for cosmesis. I hope this uh, video helped you uh, revise the topic quickly. If it did, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, uh, we post ophthalmology videos uh, at least two or three times a week. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.